Welcome to Solid Camp Professor. I'm Sydney, your Solid Camp Professor, and in this session, we'll be going through the new camp settings we have in Solid Camp 2011. We've added and made some changes in some of our camp settings, such as automatic camp definition, and we'll go through them in a few moments. We've added a new field also called stock definition. We've added some new options in tool search and in our miscellaneous we've added some options as there as well. We've added a new field called spin and feed defaults and a new field in iMachining. We've also made some changes in our part settings. We'll start with our automatic cam part definition. In our automatic cam part definition, we've added the option of being able to define the stock by cylinder automatically, as shown over here. We've also added the option of being able to define a fixture and clamp automatically in our turning operations. Next, we've added a new field called stock definition. In stock definition, We've added the default values for box definition and the default values for cylinder definition. We've also added the option of making absolute coordinates or relative to model, and we'll go through that in a moment. First on top, we have how do we want our program to open up. Do we want it to open up with the SolidCam setting values as shown over here, or do we want it to open up according to the previous CAM values that were done in the previous part? We've also done the same for our cylinder stock definition, either by the solid CAM setting values as shown over here, or the previous CAM part value. Now, let's take a little closer look at our absolute coordinates in our box offset. If I were to have my absolute coordinates set, then if I were to write here my x plus 200, y plus 200, z plus 0.5, and in my minus side, I would write the x minus is minus 2 millimeters, minus 2 millimeters in my minus y side, and minus 20 in my minus z side, then what would happen is that automatically, this is a stack what would be created no matter what the size of the part is. If I were to do it relative to model, then these values over here would be according to the model size. So if my model size was 150 in the x direction, and I had it set this way and this way in the x plus and the x minus, so my total stock size would be 154. Two on the X plus side added and two on the X minus side added. Next, we've made some changes in our toolpath simulation. We've added the option of active simulation modes. This shows you all the simulation modes that we have and which ones we want to actually see. If we don't want to have a specific simulation mode visible, all we have to do is take the check mark off one of them. For example, Rapid Verify. Now if I would do simulation, you would not see Rapid Verify in our simulation mode. Next, we've also made changes in our tool search. We've added the option of choosing composite tools as well. We've also added options in our miscellaneous field. These options include the option for setting the default tolerances for probe measurement tolerance. As you see over here, we can give our minimum and maximum of what we want our tolerance to be on startup. Next, we've added a field called spin and feed defaults. This will give us the actual defaults we want to have when we create a tool in their values. In other words, if I were to choose feed XY and put that at 1000 then when the tool comes up it'll automatically be 
at that value. Same thing with this. If I make this 300, the same thing would happen. We also have whether we want the feet to be according to millimeter per tooth or millimeter per minute. And our spin rate also works in the same way. Now that we can set our exact default values that we want, also for our turning tools as well, and our directions. So all the defaults that we need for our tools, the way we want it to come up, that's the way it'll appear when we create our tool. Now we've also made some changes in our part settings, such as we've added the option of tool coolant, where we can control the default tool coolants within the part itself. Also, we've also added the tool change position. We can have the control of the tool change position also within the part settings. Thank you for joining us on SolidCamp Professor. Take care and have a nice day.